Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. Uh, this video will be a submission for the Summer of Math Exposition number two. You can find more details in the description. Um, and today I'll be showing a cool way to derive the equation for the cosine of the sum of angles, in our case a and b. So to start off, uh, I'm going to assume that a plus b is less than or equal to 90 degrees, or that this a plus b angle is still acute. And I will generalize it to uh, every possible uh, set of angles A and B later on. Additionally, we're going to assume that A and B are both acute angles. Uh, because we know that they're, uh, we're, we're using them as acute angles, we can draw these two triangles, uh, two right triangles that have uh, A and B respectively as their, one of their angles. So we'll have A here and B here. We'll also just draw these triangles such that the, both of the hypotenuse uh, are one. This way we don't have to deal with dividing by the hypotenuse every time. And these sides will just directly represent uh, the cosine of A, cosine of A, cosine of B, sine of B. We'll also notice that this uh, big angle right here is A plus B. So we can draw another right triangle with A plus B as one of its angles. So now let's just label some of this. We'll label this O, A, B. C, D, uh, E, and I guess F here. So um, to start off, we'll just uh, mark some of the more uh, obvious lengths. So for instance, OA is cosine of A by the definition of cosine. Um, AB is sine of A again, by the definition of uh, trigonometric functions. OE will be the cosine of B, uh, by the definition of cosine. And uh, CE will be the sine of B. And we'll also notice that OD is the cosine of A plus B, what we're looking for. So what we want to do is express OD in terms of these four other lengths. And we'll be able to do this using a series of similarities. So to start off, notice that the triangles ODF, um, OAB, and CEF are all similar. And we can prove this pretty easily. So if ODF and OAB share two angles, this right angle and that angle A. So therefore they're similar. And ODF and CEF both share this right angle and this vertical angle. Uh, which is 90 minus a. So the, all three of those triangles are similar. So I'm going to start off by using the first mentioned similarity, the one between ODF and OAB, um, to show that uh, OF over OD is equal to OB, or 1, over OA, or cosine A. So for now, we'll just call OF uh, as Y, since we don't know what it is yet. So Y over cosine of a plus b, or od, is equal to 1, or um, ob, over oa, which is cosine of a. And doing cross multiplication, we can see that y times the cosine of a is equal to the cosine of a plus b. But we still don't know what y is, so we still can't figure out cosine of a plus b using only these four terms. So now we need to figure out what, what y is. Um, we'll notice that if this is y, then this line here is co uh, cosine of b minus y, because oe is equal to the cosine of b, and uh, this part, we're taking away y from oe to get fe. So we know that this is cosine b minus y, and we also know that this is sine of b. So we then know that uh, because these two triangles are similar, uh, sorry, these two triangles are similar, we then know that the cosine of A over the sine of A, right, that's OA over AB, is equal to the sine of B over cosine of B minus Y, and that would be CE over FE. So using cross multiplication again, we can get cosine of A times cosine of B minus Y times cosine of A 
equals sine of f times sine of b. And uh, if we take this and move it to the other side and take this and move it to that side, we get y times cosine of a equals cosine of a times cosine of b minus sine of a times sine of b. But remember, y times cosine of a is just uh, cosine of a plus b. So that means that uh, we have our equation uh, using only these four terms to find cosine of a plus b. So therefore, cosine of a plus b is equal to cosine a times cosine b minus sine a times sine b. But this is, we've only proved this for uh, acute angles a, b that add up to less than 90 degrees. How do we prove this for, let's say, if a plus b was larger than 90 degrees, if it was uh, an obtuse angle? Well, notice this. If a plus b is between 90 and 180 degrees, then 180 minus a plus b would be an acute angle. Moreover, uh, we're still assuming A and B are acute, so we can find their complementary angles, 90 minus A and 90 minus B. And let's just call these X and Y. So we know that X plus Y is equal to 180 minus A minus B, or 180 minus A plus B. So X plus Y will then be acute if A plus B is obtuse. Since we know this, we know that we can apply our equation here to x plus y. And we've already given definitions for both x and y. So we'll go ahead and apply it here. So cosine of 180 minus a plus b should be equal to um, cosine of 90 minus x times cosine of 90 minus, sorry, 90 minus a times cosine of 90 minus b minus sine of uh, 90 minus a times sine of 90 minus b. We know that the cosine of 180 minus any angle is negative cosine of that angle. And if you uh, want to prove it for yourself, you can go ahead. So we have negative cosine of a plus b equals, so cosine of 90 minus a, or cosine of 90 minus any angle is equal to sine of that angle. So we have sine a, times sine b, and uh, equivalently, sine of 90 minus any angle is equal to cosine of that angle, so minus cosine of a times cosine of b. And if we go ahead and multiply by negative 1 on both sides, we see we have the exact same equation. So we've now proven this equation for a plus b between 0 and 180 degrees. Um, notice we've always assumed that a and b are acute as well. So now I'll prove it for a plus b is any angle by allowing a and b to be negative, uh, or negative angles. So if we have our angle here, we've proven it for all of these angles, so we can prove it for, uh, for a plus b. So we can prove it for negative angles, we can prove it for all of these angles for a plus b. Um, to prove it for negative angles is, uh, more simple because we just replace a and b with negative a and negative b, right? Because if negative a is a positive, uh, sorry, if a is a negative angle, then negative a will be a positive angle. So replacing both a and b with their uh, negative counterparts, we'll get cosine of negative a plus b equals to cosine of negative a times cosine of negative b minus sine of negative a times sine of negative b. Uh, cosine of a negative angle is equal to cosine of that angle. So we have cosine of a plus b. And equivalently here equals cosine of a times cosine of b. And sine of any negative angle is equal to negative sine of that angle. But we have two negatives here, so that becomes a positive. And we have the exact same equation. And uh, finally, we need to prove it for uh, A and B if they are not acute angles. So let's start off with uh, A and B being obtuse angles. Notice that if A and B is between 90 and 
uh, 180. And we use the same argument uh, we did for the A plus B being obtuse. We would get negative angles A and B, but those negative angles would still be acute, right? Because 90 uh, minus, let's say, 120, for example, this is negative 30 degrees, but this is the absolute value of this is less than 90. So this is still an acute angle, which means we can use um, both this argument and the one for negative angles to prove that this works. Now, if A and B are angles from uh, 180 to 360, then we can replace, uh, we can subtract 360 to get the negative angles A and B, and we've already seen that if it works for the positive angle, it will work for the negative one. Therefore, for all angles A and B, cosine of A plus B is equal to cosine of A times cosine of B minus sine A times sine B. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you did, consider subscribing and liking the video. And yeah.